Hello everybody and welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations. This is another little labyrinth where we're talking about dyads and, um, and we're going to continue to talk about uh, how they connect into the chords now, in and out of the full chords from the normal elevator. Um, before I go any further, I just want to bring your attention to, um, if you haven't caught it yet, Chris Parks over at Things I Learned from Barry Harris, which is a channel I've learned a ton from. And Chris is a friend of mine um, who I've met through doing these videos, and he's a wonderful guitarist and musician, and he has a Patreon uh, that he just started, and I think everybody should go check it out. I'll link to it in the description in this video. And um, you can take a look and consider uh, donating to help uh, um, support that channel, which is a wonderful thing. So uh, thanks for joining me, and we're looking at G minor 6 for one more episode here because there's just a bit more I'd like to talk about before we go into progressions. Um, so here's thirds. And then I go out to fifths, to sixth, and then out to octave, and then to tenth, right? And then this is a fifth separated by an octave. And this is where I get to kind of the boundary of what we talked about, though there is more, right? Right? And you know, I can go further than that, and, and I can see the other notes around that. But what I really want to see is, okay, when I got to, like, say here, this is a big spread here. This is a, um, as I said, a, a six separated by an octave. But what can be really cool and what's important is I need to see these dyads in relation to chords, too. So look, this is, if I put this together with this, now I have a drop two and four. So I'm playing five, four, two, and one. That's a drop two and four of G minor six. So it reveals to me that in this, I have a six in the outer boundary, and I have a six within. I have a fourth here. I have a, or I would call this a scalar fifth and a scalar fifth here, right? So I could go, right? You know, I could do that motion out of this drop two and four if I saw that. If I can see that this is a fifth, well then a fifth can go out to, sorry, so, right, and then, you know, I can go, or I should have gone out to an octave maybe, but um, what did I do before? And then I did, so that's a way of finding movement not just from the big chords to the dyads, but from the dyads to the big chords. So I do a lot of this, I said this in the last episode, where I take a chord and I see some stuff I can do inside by thinking of dyads, or parts of the elevator, depending on how thick I want the texture to be. But I also want to be able to see just I can just see this sixth, and I can see, well, that's got a drop two that it's related to. You know, so I could do that. I could also, instead of that, I could do a drop three. See, that's not right. There we go. So, so I could go, and then I could go. So I don't even know what I did there. I just found the things. I have a, this interval was what I ended up with, and then I, oh guys, I was thinking of the sixth, and I put a drop three out of that, around that, right, and then, and now I'm ending on this, this tenth, I can put a drop two around them, now I'm on a six, now I'm going to put some stuff around that, I'll do with this six, I'm just really trying, What? so how do I get used to that? The way I get used to that is I have to look at all of the intervals as I move through them, and I have to compare them with any possible connection to the elevator. And then when I'm doing the normal elevator of chords, I have to do the opposite, right? So here is a third in the elevator of chords, right? So that's a third in the um, elevator of intervals, right? But then what does that go out to? Well, now I've got this 
a triad. And of course that has a third in it, a third in it, and has a fifth. So I could go like, and I could just free up into just doing fifths out into six, you know, so I need to see those connections with everything. After this, well then I go to um, the broken chord and that has this nice sixth and a fifth, right? So, right? Pretty stuff. And, and then, so you need to see those connections between them. And um, I call that the subset superset kind of approach. And we're going to be doing that more and more um, as we um, kind of integrate these ways of thinking. And it's all about finding little sounds um, inside of bigger sounds and then finding bigger sounds around little sounds, right? Um, so that'll be all that I'm going to say in this episode is just let's try to um, see those connections and um, and then the very next episode I'm going to do is uh, going to be uh, we'll do a two six by one in C major so check that one out it's coming I think I might do it right after this one all right thank you very much